Get out, Vaughn, or I'm going to slap the pages out of you. Don't feel doing ya. Hi. Evening, friend. Or morning. <laughs> Hard to tell in these Daedric realms. You've just stumbled upon the oddest family reunion this side of Fargrave. I'm Eastguild, and this annoying tome is my brother, Vorm. As you can what? see, we're in a bit of a conundrum. Wait, you yeah, your brother's a floating book? Seems my know-it-all twin found a way to become even more pretentious. At least I'm pretty sure it's him. Hmm. No, it's definitely him. Uh, I think he wants me to enter the study to find a way to fix him. Care to join? I've coin if you're interested. Well, what do we need to do? Before you came along, Vorm spat this note at me. The family's favorites. V. My guess? We go into the library and find our family's three favorite books. He's got to have something up his parchment sleeves. Something that can change him back. On to the study and help you find these books. Mother always said I was good at making friends. <laughs> Wait, where were you going, Vorm? What? Oh, he just... Did he just, like... Looks bit? like... a map? Poop out a map? Uh, how about you take that, friend? I'll just follow Vorm. I'm not touching the, the tome shell's poop. Poop map? The poop map! Vorm's map. I do think this crude map created by Vorm seems to indicate the several locations inside the study I should investigate. That's that. We'll meet you inside. Vorm? Ah, this will be fun. Now, the study is, well, big doesn't do it justice. Meandering, perhaps? You'll see what I mean. Finding three books and all that won't be easy. It's great to have another pair of eyes. Especially since Vorm's down to just the one. What are you doing, Apocrypha? Oh, me? I'm just your run-of-the-mill planar adventurer. A gleaner of Orbis operating out of Fargrave. Proud to say I've traveled all over creation. From Mundus to the realms of Oblivion and all the squiggly bits in between. I did some work for the gleaners before. <laughs> A kindred spirit! Though I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised. It's not every day you run into someone strolling through Apocrypha like it's a walk in a park. <sighs> Hope my colleague left a good impression. We can be an eccentric bunch. Can you tell me about the disquiet study. If Vorm had lips right now, he'd talk your ear off. He's an archivist here, and it's a library of sorts. Well, this whole realm is a library, but this place was always a bit more eerie. Oh, I can hear him now. Eastgill, you're being reductive. Eerie how? Vorm once told me that this study breathes life into his books. That inked words hummed with magic and nearly leapt from the page. I thought he was being flowery with his prose, but perhaps I was wrong. I suppose we'll have to see for ourselves. And you think you'll be able to find your family's favorite books inside? <sighs> Vorm's always been the sentimental type. Knowing him, he's cataloged every book he and I have ever touched. So, yes, trust me. His natural philosophy books, mother's history books, my favorite adventure series. Be in there. Well, the father's then. Uh, how did Vorm get turned into a floating book? I haven't a clue. I hadn't heard from Vorm in a while, which is odd for the North. He does enjoy scolding and chastising his sister over interplanar mail. So, I thought I'd hop on over to his favorite haunt, and this is how I found him. Difficult to stay in touch with such a, at such a long distance? When you travel through the plains as much as we do, you figure out a few tricks. A brother who lives in Apocrypha, a mother from Fargrave, some crazy uncles on Nern, and each one of us nosier than the last. Can't gossip if you don't keep in touch. And you're certain this book has, uh, is actually your brother? Well, he responds to his name, for a start. That must mean something. Of course, the family's pet bantam guard did too, and that had a brick for a brain. This thing is definitely as annoying as my brother, so let's just call it a twin's intuition. All right, let's go into the disquiet study.
Don't know how my brother gets anything done in here. Nearly lost my finger to some biting satire back there. This looks promising. Oh, I'd recognize that spine anywhere. Now, how are we supposed to get to it? I might have just a thing. Here. Ah, shouldn't be too dangerous, right? That's quite frosty out of its case. Um, now, icy crystal contains the howling winds of the, the freezing gale. And... You avoid touching it with your bare hands. Oh, I mean, you're supposed to do that. Now hurry. Grab the book before the effect wears off. The Curse of Blaskell Island. Chapter 2, or Chapter 8, Traitor's Blade. Even though the void tainted pirate spilled out from the cursed treasure chest and the blade shaved her from her throat, Captain Goldsmirk was focusing her eye on the woman who had betrayed her, the violent eyes of her first mate. Suddenly, Goldsmirk found her mind drifting to when they first met. The drunken ball had landed them both in an admittedly pr prison cell. How they were forced to swallow their pride and work together to escape. How eight, how eight picked locks and six subdued guards later they're inseparable. Had all these years working together towards this moment? A lie hidden behind the violet eyes, the lies that led to the release of Larissa Black Crew Black Sail's cursed crew. You figured it out then, have you? Her first mate said, as she turned to look away toward the battle of the wage itself on the deck below. Goldsmirk forced to watch as the crew had built together over the years fought endless horde of void empowered pirates of the burning ship. There is a flat scale, Goldsmirk, Goldsmirk said as she snarled. You look good for someone who is supposedly dead. Still, Goldsmirk's mind drifted to her past, the kegs they had emptied, the ship they had pilfered. She grew frustrated as there, she tried to center her mind in the battle, the betrayal, on finding a way to escape the beneath uh, Lurcia's blade. But Lurcia's laughed. The same laugh that had filled Darkwater Cove when they were defeated the Ashen Pirates and taken the prize. The same laugh that had once comforted Goldsmirk when they were drifting through thrashing waters not, with nothing but scrap woods and a barrel of fermented figs to keep them afloat. The same laugh that had been, uh, they had used to make Goldsmirk's whisker tingle uh, when they were full, and they had only embraced to keep them warm. This whole time, I thought you were chasing ghosts, Lurcia said. But you were the wrong, wrong captain. The title oozed from, the title oozed from her lips like poison. This wasn't a chase. I led here like a dog on a leash. Her blade pressed hard against Goldsmirk's throat. A fresh drop of blood went to the pump. Consume every word of your story. I'm still reading. Thank you. These pages reveal your doom. No, no, not really. It was all too much. Too many memories to bury. Too many nights to forget. How could Evely? No. How could Larissa so easily set her life uh, life together aside? But then, Goldsmirk saw the slightest From quiver in Larissa's lower lip. I and... Draw my strength. Yeah. And how her first mate's eyes wandered to the trickling blood dripping from the blade, blade's cut. And, most damning of all, the sight fur of her brow. The gambling tell that Larissa never was able to shake. This wasn't easy. In fact, it might be the hardest thing she's ever done. I return. Good. I understand. I understand, Goldsmirk said, with a sudden newfound confidence. A confidence to suppress Larissa, whose blade softened ever so slightly. I can't imagine what it what it must have been like, Larissa. Having to sail the seas for years with the crew who locked away. That a day has gone by that I haven't think of, thought of them, Larissa shouted, tremble in her voice. You must understand. This one meant no harm. Goldsmirk can, can't imagine how hard it must have been. How much pain you've carried. Goldsmirk took notice of the way Larissa shifted the footing. Goldsmirk steadied herself, getting ready for the moment to strike. Why? Uh, why didn't you share this burden with me? 
and admit what I had done, admitted that I have abandoned my crew, you would never understand my pain. Uh, but I can, Goldsmirk said. Not with pity, but with love. And you know why? Why? Thirsty assaults, but Goldsmirk moved faster than words could perform. All at once, she was uh, she was out from under Lucia's blade, darting low, quick. Goldsmirk's tail wrapped around Lucia's foot and pulled it out from under her, sending her tumbling into the ship's helm. Before she knew what happened. Dorisia looked up from the tip of Gold blade, uh, Goldsmirk's blade. Because you're both good captains, Goldsmirk said. We're bo we'd both sail to oblivion and beyond for our crews. Goldsmirk st stepped back, gesturing the blade's tip for Dorisia to stand. And if only to, if the only way to save my crew is to strike down the love of my life, she let the words linger in the air, heavier than the smoke of the billowed from the flaming ship. And so be it. Thersia stood, blade outstretched, a tear rolling down her face, breaking, breaking against her sad smile. She nodded. So be it. Well, damn. Hurry back before you and the book burn to a crisp. Fine. You're not burnt to a cinder or frozen to death. That's a qualified success in my book. I might need to take a detour through Takubar to grab a handful more of those. What do you think Vorm meant by your family's favorites? For as long as I've known him, Vorm has kept his secrets and sentiments tucked away between the pages of a book. <sighs> Wouldn't put it past him to put the juiciest tidbits of knowledge he's collected inside tomes with sentimental value. What kind of secrets? Oh, anything and everything. I once found proof of our cousin's affair inside a Dwemer telescope manual. Uh, Form fancies himself a scholar, but what he's best at is interplanar gossip. So, if there's a fix for his affliction, it'll be in a book. What can you tell me about the family's favorite books? I can't tell you specifics, but I'll share what I can. Whose favorites would you like to know about? Hmm. Tell me about Vorm's favorite books. Have you ever seen one of those heavy old tomes with text smaller than dust? And the only pictures are boring shapes with numbers and labels on them. Yeah, Vorm likes those. Find <laughs> the most boring section of the library, and you'll find his favorites. And your mother's? Uh, that might be tougher. Mother was a historian, and she loved nothing more than diving into events of the past. And recounting these stories to Vorm and me, of course. Uh, it's been so long. But I'll know her favorite when I see it, I'm certain. So, uh, Yeg's Guild loves the, uh, the tawdry romance novel, I see. How you doing, Lolly? This is so much better than reading. Meow, 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 meow. This isn't what I meant when I said you needed to grow a spine, Vorm. Now, this looks like some place Mother would love. Minus the beasties, of course. Though, I suppose we were her beasties way back when. Uh, let, let's take a look around. I can't quite remember her favorite, but I'll know it if I see it. Amaric Twins and Myth. And actually, tell Amaric Twins and Myth. If you haven't late, had the pleasure to travel the far reaches of Tamriel, let me paint you a picture. Imagine the crisp air of the Frostfall, the last rays of dot daylight slowly disappearing behind you in the great majestic mountain range. You stand before you a warm, cozy... to steal knowledge from me. You again? Thank you. Uh, you stand before a warm, cozy, co uh, cozy inn in, or some kind of stranger's home or some such earth where you need to, uh, where your needs the night are met. Before shuffling off to the weight of the day, you take one last look at the darkening sky, and what do you see? The twins. Jonah and Jode are a testament to the potency of the twins of Tameric, uh, Tameric mythology, but it is a sad truth that I must share. Many of the great myths of the legends have been 
Put to paper. I know, I know. I can already feel the collective shudder and passed over scholars and storytelling, but it's true. In all my travels, the most potent and vibrant stories are the ones shared for the young ones uh, around the campfire. It is a great honor to be able to share three of these stories with you, but I am, uh, but I want you to be clear. This is not, this is a privilege. These tales are to be cherished, not picked apart by academic precision. The first of stories uh, was told to me of the Agonian hatchling chewed on my leather bound journal. The tales of Agonian twins, Isaac and Tweer, who wandered too deep into the bowels of the ancient Zamir. Then we'll travel to the coast of the sisters where Malmer twins, uh, Christina and Olamar, drive deep into the uh, curse load waters. Finally, We'll, uh, we'll close with the Nord myth, the story of Finrilig uh, and Rinala, who woke them, who woke to find themselves lost in a magical blizzard. Hey, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I remember now. Mother would read these stories to us as kids. We even swapped out the names for hours. Not a surprise. Like gold, uh, like gold, the alien perspective, a forward. While I have no doubts of the countless numbers of tomes and delves deep within the reach histories of the ancient wild elves, there are none of that, uh, there are none that approach the subject of a preeminent Dalaches uh, with the care but respect for a ancient power de deserves as, uh, deserves for having built the first Tameric empire and whose rule dates back further than the record. A recorded history. The fact that we'll have no, a fact that will, no doubt, astound those new, excited, scholarly worlds, a world of ancient empires, many of whom. This is so wordy. Many of whom are implored not just skipping forward through moth-eyed prophecies or bitter fruit, harrowing tales of danger contracts, in search of limitless power. Did that seriously have? There, there's still no period. Though I understand that many scholars who pride themselves in delving deep into the more, yes, exciting moments of alien histories, but how can one discover new and unknown wild <laughs> retrending while worn trails of littered with piles of repetitious academic drivel whose only purpose is ego maintenance and padding the resist base with so called figureheads and guys. The four continues in this manner for four Five additional pages. It doesn't even have a. It doesn't have a period on the first page. Fargrave, a city of myth. Fargrave seems to be a just an obscure demiplane of oblivion, but. It has a rich history and important role to serve. Functioning as a crossroad, Fargrave finds itself as a well-trodden interplanar for interplanar travelers. For example, it would not be all too surprising to have to see a mage hailing from Somerset trading tales for a Zivkin grasp in the stricture. Because of this, Fargrave is an exciting locale for a keen adventurer. In fact, when I last visited there, I witnessed the Gleaner of Avarice interrogating this pickpocketing scamp. Something you'd be hard pressed to see in Tyrell's mundane countryside. I hope this introduction of Fargrave's rich history uh, will make the Demiplane all the more enticing for adventurers and interplanar travel. Below us. Okay. That's one. Biographies sure were full of themselves, weren't they, Vorm? You've just been reading books while I've been looking around here. Vorm? Just a little light reading. Wait, what happened to the pages? Have a look around, friend. See if you can find them. 
you find something boring, you're probably on the right track. Variants of Francis charts and grass depicting the variances of arcane telemetry. Oh, I'm so sure. excited about that one. Oh, the appendices. Lines of uh, mystical lines of academic research. Interesting idea. Let's keep looking. Your firmness. Okay. Page of densely writ uh, written runes and formula. I think that's it. Let's get this book back together. All right, let's make it back together. Put it back together. Hey, looks good as new. Well, all things considered. Anyway, grab that boring book and let's get going. You know, flying a the formula of the first age. Bone together mess of pages filled with indestructible glyphs and dense our academic root text. Oh, looks like Vorm is ready to leave. Uh, meet us outside with those books when you finish up in here, alright? Mm-hmm. Of course, it's the only one we can't read. The one with all the secrets in it. Hey. Not one of these tomes will escape my grasp. I'm gonna be taking three of them, sorry. These pages reveal your doom. This knowledge shields me from your feeble attacks. No, my chapter ends. Yeah, we're gonna leave. Time to go. Huh. You made it. Here, bring those books over. I think Vorm has a plan. Oh, yeah, what do you glad got? you made it out of there. Vorm's been so excited since we collected all three books. He's practically shedding pages. Hand me those books, and we'll see if Vorm's actually got a plan, or if he conned us into doing his bookkeeping. Hmm. Here are the books. Uh, do you know what he has planned? Not a clue, but Vorm seems excited enough. I think I'll just lay them down and let him work his magic, you know? And here, even if he stays a petulant little pamphlet, you still deserve a reward. Take Thank it. Thank you. Uh, the gleaners of the the Arborus have the gleaners of the Arborus try to avoid getting hurt on the job, but helps to be uh, to know healing implements are still available. Wait, that's four books. got yourself into <sighs> books don't need to breathe but it sure feels good to breathe again hey what happened to the books i was going to read black scale again black scale that garbage is printed on mass planar formulae was one of a kind oh no what a loss that is <laughs> <sighs> it's good to have you back brother and it's good to see you too sister thank you and thanks to our new friend as well. Warm. Hello. Greetings, my friend. It is nice to actually have a chance to introduce myself. That other form was, well, a bit limiting in terms of communicating effectively. I'm Vorm, and I am in your debt. Tell me about yourself, Vorm. For starters, I'm actually a Nord and not a floating book. Really? I work as an archivist in service to Hermaeus Mora. Though the Lord of Knowledge affords us some freedom on how to conduct our business. Hence, my private little library. How does one become an archivist for Hermes Mora? Well, 
as I like to say, there's no one way to read a book. My family's unconventional upbringing gave me a rather unique perspective, and that attracted the prince's attention. I get my own space to study as long as I share my findings. Do you plan to return? Uh, do you plan on returning to your post in the Disquiet study? Naturally. The Guardian of the Unseen may be inscrutable at times, but my prince will surely sort out the bedlam in his halls of erudition before too long. His loyal servants will need to return to make order of the disorder, and I will do my part. How'd you end up becoming a buck? Oh, just hubris and folly, I'm afraid. Though I'm skilled in many arts, confronting beasts and skulking through labyrinths was always my sister's specialty. I'm not ashamed to admit that when chaos began to befall the study, I panicked. So you turned yourself into a book to escape? My mind wandered while attempting to portal out of the study. I imagined hiding within the pages of a book, and in my haste, the spell went awry. I was left a tawdry tome with no hope of returning to normal. Until my sister arrived, of course. How'd you know to gather these books to, would save you? In truth, I didn't know for sure. But one sense of self stems from the moments and events that shape us. I was willing to bet my connection to these written words, paired with my family's bond, would help return me to normal. Mm hmm. Roll the dice, I see. It's written. I can't wait to hear how this dolt managed to turn himself into a book. It must have been a novel experience, that's for sure. <laughs> but no, really. Thank you for your help getting my brother back. We owe you. What are you planning to do now, then? Good question. Well, seeing as the study is a bit... occupied, Vorm is going to need a place to stay. And as I have no place for him to stay, that means he'll need to accompany me on the proverbial road. Is it too late to turn him back into a book? I think Vorm was going to like traveling with you? He may be bookish, but my brother really is made of tougher stuff than it seems. This ordeal proves it. He'll do just fine by my side until his precious study is back to normal. Who knows? He may even grow to enjoy a bit of adventure. Good luck in your travels. Oh, no, no, no. 